because for a long time, this used to be where I live. This was my apartment. People used to bring flowers. Would you believe? Flowers! They used to bring flowers up here. You know, like it was my living room. I had an instant TV sitting up here. Instant. You know, are you okay? They used to wake me up. Wake me up and say, hey, here. You know, want a cup of coffee? Are you okay? Then you got hootlums that runs out at night. I didn't realize in the drug world, late at night, it's another world in itself. It's a whole different territory. The worst things of drugs, this is the worst one right here, is when you have your stuff on. It's like on your steel. Now, here I am, now, now, now. But see, it's not, now you ready for this? It's funny, I've been taking dope so long that I remember I used to have this disorder where it was hard for me to sleep, and I never nodded like this. It really takes control over you after a while. It, it affects your walk, your feet, you will lose your job. Basically, your home, let me tell you something. When you work hard in the streets, when you go home, kids, home is your paradise. I don't care if you only got two nickels to rub together. You got love and you got three kids. That is your powerhouse. That's your Just like now, I'm just starting off. I'm about to nod off again. And it's fucked up. It's really fucked up. <laughs> it's fucked up. I hate that, man. I hate it. You think I love that shit? Why do you think I'm, now that I'm looking at it? When my wife's sister, Kathy, became a heroin addict, she was totally focused on the drug. Nothing else mattered, and nothing seemed capable of stopping her from using, until the overdose that killed her. So one thing I know is that heroin addiction is work. By the time addicts have needle marks running down their veins, it's become the lousiest job you can imagine with a boss who's screaming at them from inside their own skulls and no days off. That's when some junkies finally say they want to cross over to straight land, where people have kids and pets at home, a soft chair for watching TV, and dinner on the table. And that sounds like paradise. You hear after call up Till three o'clock until the cop told me to move. I had to move from the spot, so I had to go over there and sleep in an uncomfortable position. Mm -hmm. So whether you're sleeping or if you're in an uncomfortable, uncomfortable position, you're always paranoid, yeah. looking over your head, yeah. laying at because things yeah. happen. But please, if you can't stay awake and alert for one hour, then do not come to this group, because I'm, I refuse to lose uh, 15 other people for one person or two people. I know this is, people are gonna say, well, Lily, this is a group for addicts. I know that. But for a moment, you have to be a little lucid. You have to be a little aware, okay? This hour that we have here could basically save someone's life. I will bet you that nobody's seen me nod here since any of you people know me. Millie may have seen me nod a few times, but that's it. And the fact is that I take my medication as prescribed, and I do what I'm supposed to do, and I do not sit here and nod. You know what? I may sit here and nod out, and you know what? I may, I may miss out on the one thing that may save my life. There's a nod, there's a nod, yeah. which is a different total. Yeah. You know, I know every, because I did them all. If I was sleepy, you know, if I was naughty, there's a different look, a different thing, right. and I know. So please don't give me the stories about that you're sleeping, whatever, it's a big big difference, okay? I am not high. Excuse me, Stephen, don't, don't, don't mess with my intelligence, please leave. Please leave. I can't have it. Oh, so you're saying that I am? Yeah, Are you, you have to leave. Can I ask you a question? Are you saying that I am? Yes, sir. You can't say it's a methadone because it comes to a point in a, when the methadone stabilizes in the body. I was on meth for a long time, I know. So can you just please leave? I'm asking you to leave. I'm not gonna ask you again. Could you give me one more chance, please? 
smoke the crack and then have to take heroin to bring me down because I was so zooted out of my mind and to be able to at least get my head together so I could scheme on how I was gonna get you know more money to do it you know to do the crack again I had to come down so the heroin brought me down so I did both I had a double thing and then not, and then shooting the dragon I was smoking uh, in the uh, in the crack pipe also um, heroin and crack so that was chasing the dragon so um, that was what it was called then so it, it, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, crazy. You don't care where you live. You don't care where you end up that night. You don't care, you know, if you're in a shooting gallery. I didn't even shoot, but I ended up in shooting galleries. And you don't care. You just don't care. You know, you don't care what car you get into. You don't care who you talk to. You don't care who your bed partner is. You basically, as long as you can get what you need to get. Um, that's how it was for me. Millie doesn't run the group like an outsider. She has 28 years of drug use behind her, with nine years clean. No methadone, no pills, and no relapses. But it took two husbands dying, two state prison sentences, and a drug heart attack before she sobered up. Black tar heroin, morphine, crack, cough syrup with Vicodin. Name any drug, and someone in the group at some point was hooked on it. If a group member's drug of choice was heroin, they're probably on methadone. Addiction specialists call this opiate replacement therapy. They exchange a heroin habit for a daily dose of methadone because methadone is a slower acting drug that doesn't produce the extreme highs of heroin but it does stop the addict from going into withdrawal and methadone is a synthetic opiate that works on the same brain cells as the heroin itself so if an addict tries to shoot up on top of the methadone they don't get high the opiate receptor sites on the neurons are blocked by the methadone which got there first. Like a key jammed into a lock so that no other key can open it. If you read about methadone, it sounds like any other medicine. After all, it's been used to treat heroin addiction for 40 years now. But it's still such a loaded word. A lot of people hear methadone and they don't think recovery. They think a low life looking for a fix. Some people call it meth, some people call it methadone, some people call it metagene, some people call it medicine, some call it, some call it dose. You know, it's all different things because it comes in different uh, forms too, you know. But nowadays, methadone programs, which used to level off at 80 milligrams in New York and in New Jersey, 100 milligrams, now have no ceiling really. There are people on clinics in different parts of New York, I won't mention no names, my particular clinic won't go too high, but there are people that are on 300 milligrams of methadone. Now that's a methadonian, you know why? Because that person walks around like a zombie all day, uh, and when you say, you know, what the hell are you high on? Uh, methadone, you know, and that's it. They're a methadone uh, robot, and that's that. When you decide you want to get off like I have, okay, it doesn't matter 
how much meth you're on. It doesn't matter how hard it is to get off. What matters is that you put the time in and you and you do what it takes to get off meth. And it takes a lot. Don't get me wrong. For somebody who's been on since 1976, like I have, okay, it takes quite a bit, okay? It takes a lot of uh, mental help. It takes a sponsor, somebody to help you and let you know that, you know, hey, guess what? This isn't going to be easy, so you better be ready for the ride of your life, okay? Bill is 48 years old and has spent 27 of those years on methadone. When he graduated from his Catholic high school, he was already a dealer and a heroin addict. Then came Vietnam, psych wards, prisons, and detox centers. He owned a gas station for a while and drove for the Teamsters before he lost everything to a pill habit. In the 1960s, pill habits meant amphetamines and barbiturates. But today, the more common pill addictions are to benzodiazepines, a class of anti-anxiety drugs. In Methadonia, they're called sticks, benzos, and footballs. You take a couple of them after a dose of methadone, and the high is almost as good as a bag of heroin. You know what a take-home bottle is? I'll show you what a take-home bottle is. This is for the weekend, so I don't have to come in tomorrow. They put it in a bottle, okay? They don't put it in the bag. They just put it in a bottle, right? Now, this is a regular-sized bottle because it holds a regular-sized dose. The fact of the matter is, is that they had to change the size of the bottles to make them bigger and squarer because people are on such high doses, it doesn't fit in there. You understand? So, they, I mean, that's what it's getting down to, okay? I'm going to sing you one of my songs. Sounds like they're 60 songs. Oh. Hey girl, I tell you no lie I'm gonna rock and roll my way to the sky You just wait, you just wait and see, girl Oh look, look I don't give me music, okay? I can't do any better, it, it's a high-pitched voice Now, even though I can't sing If somebody else sang that song It would become an all nine sensation, okay? Okay, and that's what I write I write songs that are number one, okay? George has serious mood swings, but most people in the group like him. His ex-wife is dying of cancer, which is no good for anyone's state of mind. But even so, he's on a lot of other medications in addition to methadone. He's been prescribed clonopin for anxiety, Paxil for depression, and another drug with a name he can't remember for the voices he occasionally hears. Even if George's mind wanders a little, he likes talking about the past and rock and roll. And I used to keep my hair long, okay? Uh, what do you call it? The mullet. The mullet hair, they call it, back in the 80s. 70s, 80s and shit. Uh, Paul McCartney, uh, David Bowie, uh, what's his name? Billy Ray Cyrus. He used to wear like that. Some of the wrestlers, you know, and it would it would attract girls, man, like crazy, you know. You know what he did? It would attract guys, you know. I called him up one time. But uh, I gotta go to hair fluff for men, you know. Gotta get some hair. And HIV and hepatitis C travel the same. So very often, you know, people say, oh, did you test for hepatitis C? It's not a routine test. If you test positive for HIV, then they're going to say, okay, we better check you for hep B and C because those viruses move together in the blood. So the same way that you got HIV, you could get hepatitis B and C. And I've had patients who had all three, plus CMV, herpes, chicken pox, varicella, which causes shingles. But as long as you're healthy and your immune system is intact, most likely you're not going to be more Susie came into the methadone program to get off Vicodin. Before that, she'd had two heart attacks from smoking crack. But if you really want to know about her whole medical history, you'll need to know about bulimia and gallstones, an enlarged spleen and hepatitis C. Susie gets seizures too, and she's only 38 years old. 
The doctors have just told Susie she's pregnant with twins. She's had kids before, but because of her drug habit, the last two children were taken away and put up for adoption. This time, she and her husband Eddie are hoping they can keep the twins. But Eddie got locked up two months ago for selling drugs. And, um, you know, he just wants to come home and be a family. Is he coming home next week or something? Like On the 4th, yeah. He's like 10 summer. days. And he even said, he said, Mom, I don't, don't come back up till, you know, you come to get me. And uh, he said, I don't want you, you know, traveling like that. But it's me. I'm, I, I miss him so much. I cried the whole way home, the whole night, the whole morning. So you go to that place? Yeah. Right now, you guys are going to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about from scratch. Now there's four people. Four. Two babies that are going to depend on you. And then, not alone speak about that when you go to the hospital to have these babies, if BCW steps in, that's a bigger fight. Because if they, they're going to take the babies. And yeah, but that's, that's, this is nothing. This is nothing. Once you, once they take the babies, that's when your proving is going to start. Nope. Wouldn't give my babies up. Not giving them up. Oh no! Yeah, because it's gonna be my babies. It's gonna be. I'm going through. You think, you think that taking a half a stick? I'm down to a half a stick of Xanax a day. You think it's not kicking, kicking my ass? You have BCW cases right. in the computer. Yeah. For being an unfit mother. Well, one. Being an unfit one, mother. One, one, it doesn't one, matter. Any time that there is a, a previous case, even if the case was closed or someone adopted or whatever, they're gonna go into the background. They're gonna check, right. okay? And what they do is that in the hospital, they normally, and this is what I'm saying and I've seen, they remove the babies, you know? And they put them in foster care until you can prove that you are gonna be a fit mother. You just don't think that you're gonna walk out the hospital with these babies. It doesn't work like that. This, you gotta prove yourself. You gotta prove yourself. A week later, Susie's husband, Eddie, gets out of prison. Growing up, Eddie wanted to be a clothing designer, but he dropped out of high school and worked for his father at the Fulton Street Fish Market. Eddie was already into hard drugs, so it didn't take long before he was living on the street. And that's where he met Susie. I mean, I, I used to love getting high. I love the feeling, I love the, the sensation. The oh, and the films of pills, what the pills does now with the meth, it makes you feel like, me, to me, because she never did heroin, she was on hacker dance. But to me, it makes it close to a bag of dope. You know, a bag of dope comes, this, you get the same feeling almost when you take a pill and you take a, you and you take a meth line at the same time. Oh, it's, it's, it's a rush, feeling. but I'm not, I, I'm just taking barely enough just to, just to survive, you know? I'm not taking, uh, you know, abusing it like I used to be. Well, I, I wind up in six detail, I mean, six, uh, uh, ODs. I had six ODs. She was there for a couple mm -hmm. of them. Huh. Oh, they made him drink the whole charcoal thing. And I'm sitting there putting this in his mouth going, wake up, wake up, wake up. up. This fat. No, they want you to go through the, the withdrawals, cold turkey, and, and which restraints are. Come on. That's the lady that did to what you call it, that, uh, um, to, that, to that lady, Billie Holiday, back in the days when, they, when it was back in the 60s. Back in the 60s, it was worse back then because they make you kick in a straight jacket. They put you in a rubber room. Oh, my God. They put you in a rubber room, yeah, and they put a straight jacket on you. And uh, uh, you know who played Billie Holiday in that movie? It was Dinah Ross. Dinah Ross, she played it so good. She was like this. Her head was rolling around. She was like, you know, what, what day was what? She was totally out of it. I mean, that was horrible what they did to her. Billie Holiday was the man. What? I Billie no, Billie Holiday is a, is a, is a, a actress for uh, a actress that got hooked on. Uh, she got she was a uh, she was into what you call it? Um, Heroin? Uh, no, uh, um, you know, uh, in, 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 uh, in, 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 no, she was into that business. Um, 
you know, she was into the witch club business, you know, what, um, what's that word for it? I can't think of the word. She was in the av- uh, entertainment business, she, she was an entertainer, you know, she was an entertainer, excuse me, she was an entertainer, and, and you know, she just, what you call it, you know, she just got hooked on, hooked on heroin, and when she got hooked on the heroin, she started, you know, being high on the sets and all that that she was coming on, and then, then they sent her away, and they, they call her sending her away, they call it Detox Den, was a rubber room and a straight jacket. Real detox, all right. That's now that's now that's going cold turkey, you know. So me being strapped down to the bed, you know, while I'm going through withdrawal because they just gave me Narcon, they felt like if I was uh, Billy Holiday for a second there. Treatment for heroin addiction has changed a lot in 40 years, and methadone has clearly provided a more humane alternative to straitjackets and rubber room detoxes. But in the old days of methadone clinics, like when this newsreel was made, the doctors who gave methadone to addicts could not have foreseen the variety of benzos that would be available one day, or how those drugs would interact with methadone. Valium was the first popular benzo. Today in Methadonia, the benzos of choice seem to be Xanax and Clonopin. They're officially produced for reducing anxiety. Clonopin also prevents seizures. The surprise is that benzos not only make a perfect chaser with methadone, they're also available everywhere. Doctors prescribe them to addicts in recovery because recovery usually brings insomnia and anxiety. Even when they're taken without methadone, addicts say that benzos are as addictive as opiates. They may be legal pharmaceuticals, but they can have a double life as a street drug. If you ever want to see your brain fried, then use the benzos, okay? Yeah, because do you see how stuck an individual gets on the sticks, oh okay? On these benzos, how they much it eats they, up your brain. Oh, you guys don't realize that even when you get yeah, off and if you've used it for a long yeah. amount of time, what happens is that you still have the same habits yeah, and the kind of behaviors yes. and you're slow. Yes. You know, someone could be talking That's to you. Yeah, yeah you, you know, works. someone could be talking to you and it takes you a while to be able to oh, respond and understand man. what they're saying. Steve grew up in a large family on the Jersey side of the Hudson. He was a security guard for years and didn't start using until his mid-thirties. But once he did start, his habit got him fired and on the road to five years of homelessness. But right now, Steve says he's feeling good. He's just popped a couple of benzos on top of his methadone and wants to talk about what's been happening to him recently. And I was getting ready to go to the Brooklyn Bridge. I already had my, my medicine. I was going to take all my psych medicine, put it all in my mom. I had bought a bag of dope. I was going to do, I had bought two bags. I was going to do the two bags, swallow all my pills, wait a few minutes, get a hot coffee for the last time, and I was going to try to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. I said, well, fuck, if that don't work, I'm going down the subway station. You know? And try to find some depressed man they don't give a shit about his life to push me off. You know? That never say never. I don't give a damn who you is. Never say never. Because I would never think I would be in this predicament right now. I was the same one at 34, going on 35 years. I've been around people doing drugs. People was... Snorting coke, dope, shoot everything in front of me. I'm like, oh shit, I don't see how you can do that shit. Trust me, when I got hooked, they couldn't do that shit in front of me because I would want some. Please, please, I beg you, with all my heart, don't never do drugs. Never. It's terrible. You see this food here? I didn't pay for it. I had no fucking money. Another thing that drugs do to you, it really fucks with the mind. 
because it almost makes you believe that you actually was like Mr. Mr. Bojangles, Mr. Mr. Happy Go Lucky, business man. Oh uh, yes, uh, man. Have another cup of coffee, please. Oh, thank you very much. And you leave a twenty dollar tip, and that's great. No, you're a junkie, stoned out junkie. You're on a methadone, and you're taking all those damn pills, and it's telling you all crazy shit. Methadone programs are not there for you to stay on no 40, 50 damn years. It's a guy I know, been on methadone program for 30 years. I had to look at him and say, you know, that's the most ridiculous shit. Junkies can be cutting edge when it comes to experimenting with body chemistry. They figured out how to combine legal pharmaceuticals, benzos like Xanax and Clonopin, with methadone. It's the ultimate junkie scam. If you know what you're doing, you can improvise a high that's as good as any illegal opiate. How do you deal with the heading of this? Is how dealing with painful feelings? How are you dealing with painful feelings? How do I deal with painful feelings? Yeah, how are you dealing with them with them today? Uh, I usually get high. I usually, usually get or you high. I usually, Excuse me, it's not. I usually get high. Really high. No. I usually get high. I'm high now, right? Yeah. yeah. It seems to me, man, that you just don't like to be active in life because all that shit pulls your ass right out of life. You're not participating in nothing. It's like you wake up <coughs> just to tune out. I want you to call, I want you to call, I want you to call, uh, what do you call it, uh, St. John's. But the, the, the critical point, hold on, put your hand down. The critical point for us is when you come out of rehab, when you come out of long term, what are you going to do with this idle time? What are you going to do during the time that you were busy getting high? Okay, you had said that, you know, you were ready for school to do the computer thing. It was going to be free. So you need to start doing that, you know, planning for when you come out. But, you know, I, I, you, people just don't want to see it, you know. The, the damn pills are going to kill you. It's, it's not the med, it's not the heroin, you know. It, it's the pills. These pills today, in conjunction with the methadone, in conjunction with having hepatitis C, and, and, and with, the, with the virus, with heart trouble. Okay, and a lot of you, you know, maybe not don't realize it, but some of your peers here have mental issues too. Jeff is 56 years old and has been high every day of his life since he was 17. Last year, he went into at least 10 detoxes, quit them all, and he's still stuck in methadonia. That's why a lot of junkies call methadone liquid handcuffs. They say you trade in heroin addiction for methadone, but you're still in a world of habits and suppliers. Methadone is a pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical comes from the Greek word pharmakon, which means medicine. But pharmakon also means poison. Quiet! Quiet! Go ahead! Okay. Methadone could be more than one thing, too. It's either the end of an addiction nightmare, or it's a new way to get high, and one more obstacle to cleaning up. There is no need for awareness, no need. Awareness is the first step toward positive change and growth. I hope I, hope I can, uh, what do you call it, uh, stop you know, taking uh, pills and everything, and uh, I hope I find my higher power. 
heard, I just, I just heard a half hour ago, Jeff burned down the whole place. The show is done. He burned down the whole prop, he burned down like color TV, he burned down the little table I had, the mirror table. The holes in the house, I mean, how many times he burned holes in the floor? Yeah, you know? And the beer bottle. Pops pills. Hates beer. You know? He's not, never going to learn. You know? George, take it easy. He didn't do it to you on purpose, okay? He does. He like, burn down the whole house and shit, man. I treat him good, man. I know. You know? George, I understand. No, anything comes up, I'll let you know. George has been Jeff's roommate for the last few months. But on weekends, he sometimes takes care of his ex-wife, the one who has terminal cancer. That's why George only heard about the fire this morning. You know, I'm beginning to think this is bullshit. Why? Why? I, I, you know, I stay clean. And I don't deserve this, man. Nobody deserves this. Nobody deserves this. Nobody deserves this. Nobody deserves this. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's got a problem, yes. You know what? He doesn't want to help himself. I tried, man. This is all I can do is try. Okay? I don't hate the man. I'm grateful he put me up. Okay? But I, there's only so much I can do. You gotta want to, man. Okay? I took two flying pins and one stick, right? I went home and I bought beers, right? And I was drinking beer. Oops. And what it caught. I lay down and watch TV, and I lit a cigarette, and next thing I know, I woke up in flames. Stop waking up smoking cigarettes, God damn. I thought we all learned that lesson. I look at my theory. I'm still waiting for the Look out the window. Okay, but I haven't waited for the time. The thing is, I can think of this. People must have ran in, fucking took the TV. They take that money and make money off it. Yeah, they make money off it. I stole, okay? And I shouldn't have because I was getting in 1970, 71, I was getting $700 a week. And you can get that from uh, H&R Block, okay? What? H&R Block is an income tax, people. I, don't, I didn't understand that. Oh, you can't get that from them? If you work for it, you can. Listen, uh, Billy, I don't mean nothing against you. Just listen. I won't say Okay? That. Because he interrupts me, right? Uh, yeah, you're right. I'm not, I don't mean, I don't have... I got a high school education, that's, you call it a high school education, but you don't have to. That's a better school than them. Right? My father, my mother died when I was four, stepping on the wire. My mother took for me to go see my father. I don't know how you managed. My father was in the mob. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Drop that. Do you mind? Yeah. I have my mind. No, I said, do you mind me interrupting you? No, 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 no. You, if you do, I'll tell you. All right? Yeah, I lost half of my mind because I said, no, in mind. one place. I said, do you mind? And I said, do you mind me interrupting is what I said, not your mind. No, no. Now you can say whatever you want. Okay, go ahead. All I know is I did some bad things in my life. Enjoy yourself. Can you dial the number for me at least? Or you don't know how to do that? No, I don't know how to dial the number. No, Mario, do you let me see it. Let me see it. Thank you, Mike. Give me the freaking thing. Mario's explanations don't always clear things up, but apparently he used to work as a tractor trailer driver. His wife and daughter were killed in a horrible car accident sometime in the 1990s. 
Mario stopped using heroin 45 years ago and has been struggling with pill habits and other drugs ever since. How can it be that people take so long to return to normal life? That's methadonia. Just because an addict moves in doesn't mean there's any such thing as moving back out. Addiction happens in the brain and it can fold up an entire life until it fits inside a man's head. He's in there by himself. So sit still. Let your eyes adjust. You can see the action if you watch closely. That, this is not just baby, I'm five months. I should barely be showing I'm fat, fat, fat. That's why you're coming every week. Yeah, you better believe it. Yeah. This was my second seizure. When? Um, I had it on the last one. I had was on Saturday. Like how how long? Um, who, I don't know. I then? my husband was not home. I felt it coming on. I know when I'm gonna have a seizure because I vomit, and I sat down very quickly. And when I woke up, I had slid off the bed. Right, so when you were it. yesterday in the hospital, did you tell them you had a seizure? Yeah, I did tell them. Okay. I, I Most probably to. your levels are too low, you know. I know. You have to take I'm your medications. Scared. I'm scared. Yeah. Because you know, you I'm on the methadone. I'm on so much but, medication. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, the worst uh, thing you can imagine do- that's is that Dr. Having a right, and Dr. O'Reilly Green got mad at me last time. That's why I didn't want to tell him because he said you can't be stopping medication because that can hurt but the baby in, more than the medication. Obviously, it didn't help since you don't take it. No, I got scared, yeah. but I didn't have the clonopin, but. My life right now is Eddie and this baby, you know? The other two that were adopted, I have no, I miss Joey especially. Um, I miss Christina, but I never really got to know her. But Joey I miss very, very much. Um, I love all my kids, but they're very well taken care of. All of them are very well taken care of. I don't lose sleep over it. They're all taken care of. But right now my life is Eddie and Leah. Earlier in her pregnancy, Susie thought she was having twins. Then a sonogram revealed it was only one baby, a girl. Susie and Eddie decided to call her Leah. The sad fact is that Leah is already addicted to benzos and methadone. So the first thing on the agenda when she's born is for her to detox. The second thing is for the caseworkers to decide if the parents are fit to keep her. Yeah, well, what I'm gonna get, what I'm gonna get when we get to the next place, I'm gonna get a coat rack. And, yeah. Uh, so this is where we can hang our coat. But that's a, a studio apartment. That, that they have closets, you know, that's you know? a studio. So we'll just sit down and eat because you know, it goes hungry, you know? I have no cramps. When I, I used to think that, you know, when, it, when it says what's being said was to kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you want to be a military? Do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be a, a fireman or a policeman? Nobody ever thought that they, when they grow up, they want to be a junkie. And that's what turned out with my life. I turned out to be a junkie. I didn't turn out to be anybody important. I didn't turn out to be a part of a, a, of a thing that helps people. I'm I, I I'm limited. I the drugs that I'm on. I'm limited to do the things that I do. I can't do as much. I can't even excuse me. I can't even really work because the the effects the drugs have on me. And uh and and uh and it's gonna be with me the rest of my life. You know. Um, I feel that I think I'm never going to get out the mental eye, you know? I feel because it's going to take me six months, and I and I can't take that six months of fighting it and fighting it because it takes all your strength, and you're so weak, and you're giving So I think I'm going to be on the mental eye for the rest of my life. But I drink a lot of milk, you know, eat cereal, so this way my bones won't go go that quick, you know? And I won't be walking with a cane, you know?
methadone methadone users themselves are often misinformed about the drug. Eddie thinks that methadone destroys your bones when the real damage to bone density comes from diseases quite common to former addicts like hepatitis C and AIDS. Also, methadone users sometimes say it's a Nazi drug, originally named after Adolf Hitler. It's true that German researchers came up with methadone during World War II as a morphine substitute. And they did name their new drug Dolphine. But Dolphine doesn't come from Adolf. It's derived from the Latin word dolar for pain and the French word fin for end. The drug was first used to treat heroin addicts 20 years after World War II at the Rockefeller Institute in New York City. Though it's controversial, many doctors say that some former addicts should stay on methadone for life. They say it's the only way to treat severe cases of the disease, and without it, relapse is unavoidable. Maybe methadone treatment alone needs to be thought of as the recovery, not just one step on the way to some elusive, complete cure. What makes you want to get off methadone now? Yeah. Because I'm gonna, and also I'm going to be 50 years old in September. Forget about 50 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because what? I'm going to be 50 years old in September. September. Seven, man. Oh, wait a minute. You're 50 wait, years old in September. Yeah. September. Also, also, hey, next Thursday is going to be 14 years of HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't want to have, as they call, liquid handcuffs. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, listen, listen, oh, listen, 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 listen. What I can't picture here is that why would you want to knock off your methadone and stop taking your methadone because you was HIV positive for 14 years come next Thursday? Because I'm not getting any younger. Coming of age, being 50, or because you're HIV positive and all that stuff, those are all great reasons why to get off, okay? Mm -hmm. But the greatest reason of it all should be, and needs to be, that you're ready. That's right. That you want to, that you're ready. I do that you're, you are not emotionally, physically, whatever, because you're a chronic relapser. Stop the bullshit. I know, that. Bullshit, I, know I, okay? I know I am. Stop that. You know I admit it. I admit you just it. keep quiet? Yes. You're a chronic relapser. Today you'll be doing fine, and, and in a couple of days, uh, some shit happens in the wind, and you want to go get high and go on a run. And every time you go on a run and you come back, you're worse. Right. And if you don't stop, you're gonna, God's going to lay you down, man. Why would you worry about getting off meth in such a freaking hurry? Well, I mean, how, you, you, how do you plan on getting off? Just throw it away? If a person could follow the regimen and just be on their medication and on their proper dosage and whatever, yes, you can have a productive, functional life because I worked for a long time. Basically, I've worked basically all my life since the age of 13, and many of those years were spent on methadone, you know? Uh, um, I also had my guidelines. There wasn't a level of methadone I went over. You know, there was, you know, I didn't want to go over a certain, I didn't want to be on 100, on 150, on 90, I didn't want to, you know, so, of course, definitely, I stayed on a level that I could basically function in, and no one would have to know, you know, my private life that I was on methadone, and it wouldn't show, you know, I didn't want to go there, because I also wanted to work and make money, and have a decent, semi-productive uh, 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 life. But um, basically, that's what we miss, though, when you're on methadone, it's the drama, but then that also wears out. Eventually, people get tired of all that, you know, uh, um, running and chasing or whatever, but the reason why you stop that running and chasing is because you're getting old. A lot changed since the last time I saw you, huh? When I was nodding out, everything was great until I nodded out. That was my breaking point. That was when it was time for me to change. And now I'm no longer homeless. I'm in a program now and uh, everything is well. When I get my money, I turn it over to them. They give me out allowance. Uh, it's funny that I thought I was gonna be triggered. You know, I was gonna have the triggers yesterday when I got my check, but no desires at all to get high. But I was really messed up. Strung out on drugs, I was really messed up. My, I was stinking, my girl didn't wanna be bothered with me. Now that I got clean, she told me everything. She told me everything that was bothering Everything that was bothering her that kept her away from me. She said one day I was sitting there and little gnats was flying out my head. I thought I looked it good. That's how the drugs fool you. Drugs will fool you like that. And that's the way I was uh, uh, until I fell in love with this girl and she made me feel like a person again. Made me feel like I was important. So I um, 
I picked myself up and I said, well, this is it. I don't want no more drugs. And um, I did it all on my own. I did it all on my own. That was so great. I did it all on my own. Steve did it all on his own. I went to rehabs. I went to detoxes. But you can go to detoxes and rehabs all you want. But if you don't get it for you and love you, none of that shit's going to work. And the reason why I curse is because I'm angry. You know, when I think about all the misery I cause people, all the pain, going to jail to the point that the cops knew me and they laughed every time. Oh, when are we going to see you and get in handcuffs, Steve? You know, my girl was about to leave me. She had me in tears. She was saying, get your stuff together. I remember I was stinking so bad, my socks. I didn't mean for her to find them in the bathroom, but I forgot. When I stuffed them, I didn't realize they was going to fall out. She smelled them. She threw up. They were so stinking. She, she could have left me on the stink socks alone. She could have left my ass on the stink socks alone. They were so funky. I'm going to tell you, if you want the president out the White House, just throw a sock in there. His ass will run like hell. And he wouldn't come back. Needle. Yes, you do. I can't do this without no needle. Try first. No, please, no. Oh, okay, okay. Sometimes so little. Right? I, I'm very sensitive. <laughs> I'm very sensitive. Have you tried me first? No, but I'm very sensitive, though. I can't take too much because pain. I, My first, girlfriend pinched me. I holler. Personally, I think if I give you a needle, you will hurt more than just, you know, before the needle. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you get clean. You realize that you let yourself go, and then you want to do something about it when you come clean. Because when I was getting high, I didn't think about no shit like this. I mean, today I feel good. I was anxious to go to the dentist. You know when the last time I've been to the dentist? Oh, well, I don't know when the last time I went. But look, I'm clean, and I want to get my teeth done. Because, you know, when you're an addict, you don't think about nothing. You don't think about nothing. All you think about is just getting high. Look, I'm clean, dressed up nice. I was worried about them spilling something on my shirt. He with me every day, and he helps me along my way. He's my God when I'm in trouble. He's my God when I'm lonely. He's my God when I'm friendless. He's my friend. Oh, yes, he is. Written by the late, great Sam Cooke. Beautiful music. Even though Steve is no longer homeless, or popping pills, or nodding out, he's still on a high dose of methadone. But now he's determined to get off that too. Apparently methadone detox can be brutal, with many of the same symptoms as heroin withdrawal. Muscle and bone pain, chills, body cramps, vomiting, and diarrhea. Trying to go to, the, to go to the hospital? Yeah, yeah, immediately. Don't wait. Don't wait, now. Go. Go. Oh, man, what's going on? Oh, my God, why am I so nauseous? Mm. Holy crap. Part of me does, because I can't take this pain anymore. The baby's got to be fine. Believe me, they're going to take care. They're going to make sure, okay? They're going to make sure that the baby's going to be fine. So you got to stop. The baby's part of me, so she's strong. I know she could. Believe me. She sounds like a horse galloping. With the heart and the strength that I got, believe me. Believe me, Leo will be fine. Oh, God. I know they told him to breathe. And you can't breathe. What's wrong? I'll say it real quick. No. No, what you call it? Don't say it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit.
While Eddie and Susie are letting people know that Leah has arrived, no one can see her yet. She's six weeks premature, weighing four pounds and two ounces, and in the intensive care unit. She's, and, and plus, you know, enough money, you know, in case I need anything. My husband went here. You know, the magic wand and the magic is here in your heart. Okay, when you make that commitment that you no longer want to use, you know? Well, if you come up with that pill, you let me There know. is no oh, damn pill, man. If there would have been one, we all would have taken one. But I know that we all are sick and tired of fucking using. You know, I know. Uh, you know, relapsing and fearing the moments and fearing the problems that come along and then right away use. There is no friggin', you know, easy pill. <laughs> and thank God Monday is a holiday. For who? For me. Why, you're not going to use Monday? No, they would have taken urine. I know that. And like I know what I, I'm doing. I, Can I do this? I've decided to stop. You know, the heroin, you know, but I used and I, I said, wow, that's stupid. They're going to, they might take money. Since George was burned out of his apartment last winter, he's been living with his ex-wife. He's concerned that her cancer is getting worse. Uh, we've grown apart, okay? I really believe that, all right? Okay? I believe the chemotherapy has something to do with it, but... I, we, we've grown apart. We've grown, we've grown apart, and uh, there's, there's nothing else I can say. There's nothing else I can say, you know? But Rachel, I feel close to, but Rachel is straight. And it's nice to go out with a straight chick, you know? And Rachel's in her 50s, and I said, I think you're eight, 38 to 42, and she says, oh, you know? Diamond is, isn't a girl's best friend. Makeup is, all right? A guy likes to see a woman feminine. Okay, what turns me on is stockings. Okay, okay. there could be a woman, a beautiful woman, wearing a, wearing a nice, nice dungaree, uh, uh, dungarees. And there could be a woman that's half-assed wearing these stockings, and then I'll go along with the stockings because I'm a leg man. Okay, that's it. All right, there's an ass man, a tit man, and a leg man. I'm a leg man. Okay, you know, it's like kryptonite. It's like love potion number nine. It's like Cupid. I, I gotta go, you know? I bet put them on, you know, <laughs> I just went gaga over, you know? George's own health doesn't seem so good either, and his mood swings are getting wilder. He admits that he's been shooting cocaine. Eventually, people get tired of all that, you know, uh, um, running and chasing or whatever. But the reason why you stop that running and chasing is because you're getting old. Because I want, I, I don't want to fucking fuck around no more. I just don't want it no more, man. I've had it. I'm getting too old for that shit, man. You know? Really? That's what it is, man. I'm getting too old. And who knows how long I'm gonna be here, man? You know? That's all I got to say on that subject. <laughs> I'd like to get another apartment, man. Because the YMCA, man, it just ain't getting it. So, just see, I'm telling you, I was I was bugging yesterday, man. I was going literally out of my mind in that fucking room. I was bugging yesterday, man. You should have seen me. I was a basket case in that room. You should have seen me. But uh, other than that, man, I feel all right now, you know? I feel much better, man. That I got out today, you know, sitting with you. That was really nice of you to take me out for breakfast. That was very nice. Thank you. A few days later, Jeff was so high in group that he pulled a knife on another client who was hassling him. Jeff was suspended from the group. Take two pills, say Xanax. 
15 minutes later, with your method on, you, you like this. You know? Months ago, Mario said that he took a pill now and then. Much later, he admitted that he'd been doing up to a dozen benzos a day with his methadone. They have a saying in recovery, you're only as sick as your secret. Mario's secret put him in the hospital. Six weeks later, he came out looking like a poster boy for detox. Wow. Look at him. Fantastic. Oh my God. You saved your life. You saved your life. Oh my God. You got that diploma? Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, great, to come to the meetings. That's I'm going to be great. here every day. Here's St. Mark's. That's Isn't that great. something? And uh, looking to get a job. I mean, that's that's so nice. One step at a time. That's I'm free so of drugs. Nice. Yeah. The only thing I'm on is method on, and that's going to be next. Yeah. You look like your old self, right? Oh, no, this, like is this is This is how you feel. Yeah. That feels great. Yeah. It feels good. My mind is clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I can't even begin to tell you. You look great. You feel great. And in order to keep that glow, because now you have the glow, that's what we call a person. That's when they stay. That's what it is. You get, you get a certain glow. Well, you don't know. Yeah. My mind is so clear. Yeah. You don't have that grayish color. You don't have nothing. You're just glowing and shining like you a new person. And and um, I've been through hell. I know you, you know did. what, but it's worth it. And you, you stay. And I stay. And I stay. I went to the meetings. <coughs> there like 10, 50 meetings a day. I know. I, I went I know. through it. But to kick a benzo habit, it's oh god. Compared to heroin, there's nothing compared. I mean, this benzo is getting into your bones, inside your bones, and eat you up alive slowly. A few days later, there's a rumor that Mario is buying pills again. As hard as it is to withdraw from benzos physically, it's even harder to get over the psychological dependency. Does addiction somehow change your brain so that the craving for drugs never wears off? A disease like diabetes prevents the pancreas from making insulin. Maybe addiction alters the brain, so it no longer makes willpower. So then what is recovery? It's all about choices. You know, it's all about choices. I just happen to be very stubborn, you know? And when I decided that I wanted to get clean, I was stubborn. And I, and I said, I'm going to go for this. And the more people said I couldn't do it, the more I did it. I don't believe that no one cannot get clean, you know? Um, wanting to is you know the desire and working at it you know people just find it easier comfortable to just stay stuck in that it's easier to be an addict sometimes they feel in their minds it's easier what if you're not as stubborn as millie are you an addict for life this seems to be the paradox of recovery it takes effort to beat addiction but drugs are steadily beating down your ability to make an effort the more effort you need, the less you have. Don't think I ain't scared, I'm scared. Now I walk down the street, I don't wanna, I'm on my bit my lip yesterday. I thought I was having a seizure. I thought I was about to have a seizure. I bit my lip. They say you try to swallow your tongue when you, what's the name? I was scared yesterday. That's the fucked up feeling. You don't know if you're going to make it to the next. Then I'm wondering, if they dropping me too fast? Can I go in the cardiac arrest? It's 80 and 90 degrees, and I'm detoxing. A program that dispenses methadone is licensed to maintain a client on the drug, not necessarily to take them through detox. When Steve said he wanted to get off methadone quickly, he had to sign a form stating that his actions were against medical advice. Are you on your way to work? Then the clinic started dropping his dose rapidly. It's very important if you pick up. It's very important. I have to talk to you. It's very important. When he gets down to 40 milligrams a day, then he can be hospitalized to complete the detox. If that doesn't sound pleasant, people on methadone will claim it's intentional. They point out that most of the programs are privately owned, and there's a lot of money to be made on methadone. The programs hate losing a client. 
They told me that. Oh, that suicide detox. They told me that uh, you sure this is what you want? I said, yeah. Yeah, but you do it a little slower. If really? I were you, I, I would give them the card back. Okay. I, I would do ten. Tell a month. them to slow it down. Ten a month. Do a reasonable detox. That's not reasonable. That's a dead man's drop. Suicide. By the time you're at the end, you're gonna be shooting dope. I, I, I'm not gonna wish it on you, but I can guarantee. That's why they don't call it methadone detox. You can't find methadone detox unless you go inpatient. So therefore, when somebody wants to get off, they try to hurt you a little bit, and they gave him a good ass whipping with a couple of drops, and now he's thinking about what to do. I know he's hurting. I feel real bad. It's like destroying my whole life. Methadone is the worst thing you can get on. Cause they treat you like fucking shit once they get you, once they get you hooked. You're nothing but a junkie. Come get your fix in the morning. And I want to be a normal citizen. Now I'm on 60 today. The day is when they hit me with 60. And I feel like shit. I'm being honest with you. I'm very suicidal right now. Because if I don't have something to make me happy, to make me worth living for, and I'm in a lot of pain. The smethadon, would they want me to come back to beg and please? Oh, no, I can't take it. Put me back on. Yes, they want me to do that so they can have me back. Back in their clinches, liquid handcuffs. But I would rather drop dead with this shit on me than to ever go back. detoxed from methadone and benzos before leaving the hospital. It took six weeks. Normally, that's how long it takes a baby to learn how to smile. Imagine knowing addiction and withdrawal before you even know how to smile. Okay. I'm the best at that, so you can't beat me now. I'm the best at that. I'm the best feeder. Everybody's your turn, too. So. I'm the best feeder because I know how to burp. And I'm doing it. She passed me. It says, Burper, please, Eddie Burper. I know how to burp. I know how to do this. You know, I'm ready to raise another kid, you know? This could be that, could be that, could be this. You know, I've been through a CAT scan. Uh, what else? Uh, I, I've been tested for uh, X ray. I went, I, went I, I went through it all. Oh, I just want to get my life back. You know, I, so I just want to walk on my own and just be. Start a whole new life. That's all I want to do. Hey, Billy. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Billy. 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 George can't explain what's happened to him. He thinks he's had an operation on his lower spine, and he's fighting a severe infection. George is also paranoid, and writes notes saying the hospital is trying to kill him by draining his blood.
Steve guts it out on his own until he's down to 40 milligrams of methadone a day. Now he can go in the hospital for the 10 day detox. This is Steve before he goes in, having coffee with his girlfriend. This is his girlfriend's hand. She refuses to let any more of her be photographed. Steve can't be photographed or even visited in the hospital detox. He stays in there a week until his dose is down to almost nothing and he feels so sick he quits the detox. Steve goes back on methadone. Earlier when it started raining, I started saying, good. I mean, it's gloomy, everybody else have a gloomy day. But that's not fair, that's not right. You know, let everybody have a blessed day and let things work well for them, because I hope things will work well for them. Yeah. I'm just real exhausted. My eyes can barely stay open. I haven't slept in about four, four or five days. story it could be a pleasure to hear about the prodigal son comes home i was lost but now i'm found a happy ending but a lot of recovery doesn't unfold like a story it becomes too ordinary the daily meetings going to the clinic relapsing getting sick cleaning up and then using again Maybe this is how addiction most resembles a disease, because a lot of diseases don't go away either. You just keep on managing them. A trip to the doctor, exercise, take your pills, and so on. That's the same kind of story as fighting an addiction. And telling it can take a lifetime. A cloud in the sky 